All right, one of our good friends of this show, Eric Garcia Gunderson, Blazer Substack, on Twitter, at Blazer Banter. Uh, you've known him for a long time. He's still in our lives, thankfully, and uh, we get to talk about the NBA All-Star Game. We've got listeners, Gundy, saying maybe 2v2, 1v1, get Ja Morant, Giannis, Wimby in the dunk contest, I'll care. What would Eric Gunderson do to fix the NBA All-Star Game? Oh, man. Um replace it with a second in season tournament and, <laughs> and, 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 and have the, the, whatever, whatever sponsor they can, they can get for that one. Since they already got a sponsor for the other one, you know, have them kick in, you know, because it's, it's an opportunity to show off like what's good about the NBA and right after football season. And it seems like instead of doing that, they showcase just kind of, not how, you know, I mean, obviously you can see how they score, but it's not like a real representation of how good the league is, in my opinion. So I think a, a second tournament probably would be the best thing to do overall. And then you could sprinkle in the Saturday night stuff on like the off day, kind of like the final four. You know, you mentioned something there and it's interesting because I think you're right. Like for a lot of people, I mean, it's a lot of people. We need to be honest in this country that this is kind of the check-in. Oh, the NBA, that's right. It's a thing. Football's done. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny that you say they should be highlighting what's great about him. I text this to you and everybody else all the time. Love the sport, hate the league. What did we take away from this league? Hey, you can play Wimby as Spider-Man in a video game. Our court lights up green and we have a right-handed player hitting the side of a backboard with his left hand as a little misogyny is echoed by Kenny Smith because Sabrina's taking on Steph Curry and there's no defense being played. And all we do is dunk and shoot threes. Like you're right. It should be a highlight of the league. And I think the takeaway is this league sucks. I, I, I know that they, you know, we're up 5% year over year in our viewership and all of this stuff that they try to, Hey, we have a lot of Twitter followers and we're really popular on TikTok. But I think for the most part, we see the ratings. It's like, Hey, that playoff game got 2.2 million people. And it's, it's just, it, it's not good. It's pitiful. I, I think what they highlighted is this league kind of sucks right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, I think it, the the bad All Star Game rewards a lot of the people that are just cool with following the league via highlights on Instagram, highlights on TikTok, yes, highlights on Twitter, and 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 that's how they consume the league, and then they consume it via the transaction theater, and it's like for a lot of people, like what happened on Sunday night is a validation of that stance. Now I'm not one of those people. Mm -hmm. I know you're not, yep. but it's just like, but like those are the people that you have to attract to try and make the sport more, you know, more popular. And, and, and in terms of the rating, it's waning in popularity. And it's like, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta have some good product to show these people. And the all-star game is not a good product anymore. I mean, it, it breaks my heart. It used to be my, one of my favorite things of, of, the, of the, the calendar year, even though it was, you know, a meaningless game, it was always fun. And now, it's it just not the same intensity. Like you saying, like, I mean, Anthony Edwards, like he was, everyone was like, Oh my gosh, this guy's the next face. He's going to take over. He's shooting left-handed in the skills competition and totally ruins it for the number one pick team. And then he's not taking it seriously during the game. And then after the game, at least he was honest about it. He's like, I don't, I don't, this is a break for us. And, and, and so I think the only way to kind of change that is maybe just like, yeah, maybe have like a week off, but like, I think still maintain uh, that weekend with some programming. I think a tournament that, that they build into the schedule, uh, a second one is probably the best way to do this. Cause we saw those guys go super hard for 500 K in the other one, in, in, in the first one. Yeah. And I, and, and, and it got better ratings in the Christmas games. And, and, and I, I just think it's, I, I think having something for these guys to actually play for is, is, is the only real solution at this point. I mean, I, I have heard some people say the all-stars want a, an additional cash prize on top of like whatever they get in their contract incentives. And, and maybe that's it, but I, I don't know if it's going to be it because do they really care at that point after you know, what, what the all-star weekend has really become, which is just a party for corporate sponsors. It's not really a celebration 
for fans anymore. I thought it was weird too. They had the game not at the Pacers arena. And I, I, I think I saw you tweet something to the effect of like, atmosphere's massive too. You have it in these football stadiums. It's just basketball in those stadiums is not great. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I, I thought that was an underrated part of it. What did you make of Dame's weekend? He wins the three point contest. He defends the crown and then he hits two just casual half court shots. Looks how you and I look shooting a free throw from half court and wins all-star game MVP first player to win, uh, an, an, a, a competition and the all-star game MVP since 88 when MJ did it. what did you think of Dame's weekend? I thought it was great. I mean, I was really happy for him. I know it's been a, it's like the last, you know, a couple of weeks have not have been pretty tough for him from a performance standpoint. I mean, he just hasn't shot the ball well, um, as well as he has, you know what I mean? And, and to the standard that he set. And so, uh, for him to kind of, you know, get right a little bit, especially amongst the best players in the league and the best shooters in the league in the three point contest. And then like, you know, to have a little swagger back, it looked like, you know, uh, to hit the, those half court shots and, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be, you know, as, as much as we're saying it was meaningless for everyone, maybe this was a turning point for Dame uh, to kind of turn the season back around from him because yeah, I, I think it was, uh, I thought, I thought it was kind of important for him. And, and I, and that stat just goes to show you another one of the things about Saturday night is that like, you know, the, the stars will compete in the three point shootout, but you know, it's just been such a long time since, stars that could win the all-star MVP were in the dunk contest. And, and, and that is just like, I, I don't even know how we get back to that uh, because it, it, it just seems like that, that that's not going to happen quite anymore, but Dame did it, which is, which is pretty spectacular, even though, you know, I think the whole weekend was pretty widely panned by everybody else. Yeah. Who was the, I mean, I know Jalen did it, but I thought it was pretty bad dunk attempts. Dwight was probably the biggest name before him, right? In a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Dwight, Dwight was definitely, cause Dwight was like, when Dwight did it, he was like, you know, like still like defensive player of the year. Yeah, like, he was w- peak w- Dwight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree with you. Dwight was probably the last like real superstar guy that did the dunk contest. Um, Levine, and, and Levine's probably the closest, like next level type player. I mean, Blake participated, I think in that Kia year. So like they've had, you know, Gordon Levine is still one of, I think it's the best dunk contest I've ever seen, to be honest with you. But a lot of people harken back to the eighties or the nineties with some of the bigger names that were participating. I still think Gordon Levine is the best dunk contest. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I mean, I mean, Gordon Levine was, was the one of the best, it was the best one that I saw. And then Gordon came back in 2020 and then didn't win it. And I think, you know, obviously, I mean, Gordon's at a different point in his career. I don't think he'd be coming back for it. But uh, I, I think some of the, the way that it has gone down for guys that have clearly been the best dunker not winning it also has turned some guys off. Like, I know yeah. Steve, and I had, Steve and I had that whole rant about LeBron not doing it. And it's not that I don't think LeBron not doing it didn't have an effect. But I do think that, like, guys see these guys go crazy and it's just like, and they don't win. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Gordon does all these ridiculous dunks we've never seen done, but Zach Levine wins it because why not? Uh, I'll get you out of here on this one, Gundy, because I know you're busy. Uh, quickly, the, the viewership numbers for local TV markets, Portland has the biggest drop in the NBA this year, 60% drop in viewership. Uh, what say you, is this just simple? Well, the team sucks. Of course, people aren't watching. Is it a TV problem? What, why do you think Portland is the biggest one out of everybody in the league? I mean, I think it's a cocktail. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a toxic cocktail of both things. I I, I think the team being bad and then, you know, getting rid of Dame. And I think there was a lot of maybe some energy about like a new team. And then the team was bad to start the season and, and then has really not really strung any wins together to kind of generate any excitement. Although, you know, it is nice to see Scoot playing better, but I think the biggest thing, or it's gotta be equal in my opinion is the fact that nobody has the channel to watch the Blazers. So I do think there's a lot of people that want to watch the Blazers that are either not renewing their Comcast or finding, you know, other means in 2024 to potentially watch their team that they're not going to be giving ratings directly to the TV, uh, you know, the TV broadcast of the Blazers. And I think, I think all of that going together is just, is just really bad. And that's why, 
the local ratings are down so much. And I, 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 I think it's, uh, it's definitely both. Eric Gunderson, Blazer Substack on Twitter at Blazer Banter. Give him a follow. He's a good friend of the show with his thoughts on how to fix the All Star weekend if you even can. And uh, Portland's viewership numbers down significantly compared to every other team in the league. Give him a follow again on Twitter at Blazer Banter. Gundy, thanks for hopping on this morning. We always appreciate the time and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Absolutely. No problem, Sprague. It was great to, great to be on. Thank yeah, you. There we go. Eric Gunderson joining us live from the porcelain. As he does every time he hops on with us. He flushed the toilet last time. Uh, but uh, giving us his thoughts on the All-Star game and how to fix it.